History makes generations, and generations make history. We've talked a little bit about generations so far today. We're going to talk a little bit more about them, particularly the millennials. What word comes to mind when you think of millennials? What thoughts are conjured up? I'm guessing that 95% of you in this room are going to fit into one of two mindsets. Either you're thinking creative, transformative, social, us. Or you might be on the other end of the spectrum and you're thinking more along the lines of self-centered, lazy, narcissistic, me, me, me. Well, conflict amongst generations is nothing new. I mean, as the saying goes, every generation thinks they are smarter than the previous and wiser than the next. But this particular generation seems to be quite polarizing. I mean, what is it about them that's so unique to evoke such strong emotions? Well, it ends up they're actually not that unique. Historian William Strauss and economist Neil Howe have kind of tracked generations through history, and what they have found is that every 80 to 100 years or so, there comes an event, some sort of crisis, that fundamentally shakes us to our core, changes us, makes us react in new ways, and really helps to shape the next generation. You can trace this back to the Revolutionary War, jump ahead to the Civil War, continue on, and you end up in the Great Depression, and then most recently, the financial collapse. And you know, the most recent financial collapse had a large impact in shaping this generation. What you may see as lazy or self-centered, they would respond and say, not only have I seen the big short, I lived the big short. I saw money disappear, things get taken away. So I choose to invest in me, in experiences. But what does any of this have to do with coffee? Well, what's interesting is you can actually see coffees take shape in America through these same events. Start at the Revolutionary War. You have the Boston Tea Party, and John Adams says tea must be universally renounced, and coffee begins to take shape in America. There's a letter in which he writes to his wife, Abigail, where he says, I'm a lover of tea, but I must learn to embrace coffee as tea has become unpatriotic. Well, I believe we have learned to embrace coffee quite well. You jump ahead 80 years, you end up in the Civil War. And by the Civil War, coffee had become such an important part of our day. Green coffee was actually given out to soldiers as part of their daily ration, and they would roast it on the battlefields. And the rifles that they were issued actually had an attachment that you would put on, and that's how they would grind the coffee. And the coffee was important not just because of the caffeine content to help them stay awake and fight, but it also at those cold nights, it's not only just what would warm their bodies, but would warm their souls. It was the comfort of the battlefield. And we saw coffee make its way from the battlefield to the chuck wagons and across America. You jump ahead another 80 years and you end up in the Great Depression. And when you think of the Great Depression, quite often you think of the image of soup kitchens and you see those pictures. But if you look at those pictures closely, the signs always said, soup, coffee, donuts. Because coffee wasn't just something that we wanted, it was important, it was vital to us. It was as important as our daily bread, if you will. And at one point we started adding chicory to it to help spread it out and make it last a little bit longer. You have World War II and we see instant coffee and espresso being introduced to the American market. And then you jump ahead another 80 years or so and you end up in the financial collapse. Coffee became our affordable luxury. Maybe you couldn't buy new things, you couldn't go out to a big fancy dinner, but you could meet for a cup of coffee. And we started to want value for our dollar, so we saw a return back to the craft of coffee. So today for you, we've assembled a group of speakers who are embracing this change and helping to create tools for the specialty coffee industry to deal with future generations. You know, we've got more access than ever before to information. And so we're looking for new ways to package and deliver that information. And our first speaker, Bill Ristenpart from UC Davis, is going to explore what is the university's role in educating this next generation? What would a degree in coffee look like? And then you've got the other end of the spectrum, where maybe we're not going to school for coffee, but we don't need to, because I've got everything at my fingertips. I've got Google, and that can answer all my questions. So Jordan Michaelman from Sprudge is going to explore the impact of technology in this day and age where a hashtag has become just as important as a handshake in business. And this new generation is not just about people, but about ideas coming to the forefront. I mean, climate change is a real thing, and we cannot continue to operate with the mindset of business as usual. 
So Jerome Perez from Nespresso is going to explore a new frontier, growing coffee in non-traditional origins. If you've traveled through coffee labs around the world, you've seen the SCAA flavor wheel as a staple on the wall. And today, we usher in the next generation of that flavor wheel. So SCAA science manager Emma Sage is going to take us into the science and research that went into developing the wheel to help us better talk about the beverage we love so much. As I said earlier, when we talk about millennials, you probably fall into one of two mindsets. And today's workforce is where these two mindsets meet. By 2020, millennials will make up over 50% of the workforce. And for them, a paycheck is not enough of a reason to show up to work. They need a purpose. When you call people up for an interview, there's quite the opportunity that they're going to sit there and interview you. What's your company's culture? Where do your profits go? How are you going to invest in me and make me a more valuable asset? Noah Namowitz from Cafe Imports is going to go ahead and explore what it looks like for companies with this new generation. No matter how you feel about this next generation of people, we are in a new generation of coffee. And to usher in the conversation, everybody, please give a big round of applause to our first speaker, Bill Ristenpart from UC Davis.